Hi, everybody. Welcome to my Facebook Live, or if you're watching on YouTube or anywhere else, welcome. And tonight I am speaking about, oh, how to rock your stage here. No, <laughs> um, how to, or practices for creating relationship harmony with your partner. So say hello, let me know where you're listening from. And we're going to dive into seven more practices. So if you were with me last week, I shared seven, seven top practices. I've actually got seven more. They are in no particular order, but these are going to help you feel more connected to your partner, have more harmony in your relationship, more ease and flow and less conflict. So take notes and here we go. We're diving in. Again, in no particular order, communicate your concerns as soon as possible or right away when they come up. So why is this so important? Because when we stuff it down, when we, when we, um, you know, hold it on, hold on to it, we think, well, that person's not going to react well, so I'm not going to tell them, or I'm going to wait till the right moment. Then what often happens is we create more distance with the person because we're, we're holding some important information back, right? We're withholding. So the more you withhold, the more distance you will create. So the sooner you can communicate what's going on, even if it could create, you know, dis-ease, discomfort, um, the better, because you can work through it instead of, you know, the other person being frustrated that you didn't tell them sooner or, um, or you creating this, experience of discomfort between you because you're holding something important back. Number two, share appreciation for one another. So if you were in my recent um, communication training, or some of you were in my long-term, my year-long group, the Rocky Relationship Immersion Program, you know how important communication is. And we speak about this appreciation. <clears throat> it's been well-studied by the Gottmans that the, in the Gottman Institute, if you want to check it out, that appreciation goes a long way towards making people feel seen and heard and of course acknowledged and it helps people feel more connected to each other. And the problem is most people don't do it enough. So the more appreciation, the more connection you're going to have. Number three, spend quality time together regularly. I know it can feel difficult in this, you know, this time that we live in where there's so many distractions, there's always so much to do. Some people are working more than one job, you've got kids or whatever projects you're, you're managing, and it can be hard to carve out time together and quality time. When I say that, I don't mean just watching a movie together necessarily, but time where you're connecting, you're interacting more intimately when you do that, or we, or we could say time that you're having fun. Um, again, we're going to build a sense of connection. So this is important. Otherwise you feel like you're just living side by side, but you're not necessarily like, you know, connecting on a deeper level. Number let's see four. <laughs> Number four is to speak fondly of your partner to other people. So if you have complaints about your partner, of course, you need somewhere you can vent your concerns, but ideally you do that with your partner or with a coach or therapist. It's not ideal to vent about your partner to a lot of people. Maybe you have a close, close friend where you get to, you know, speak whatever you need to say. But if you do a lot of venting, a lot of complaining about your partner, it, um, well, of course there's, you know, what other people think, which we don't want to put a lot of attention on. But it's, it just kind of brings your energy down and it brings, and, and it's you focusing on, you know, what's not working. So you do need a place to talk about that stuff, but I encourage you to do that with professionals. <clears throat> um, remember, and so on, on the flip side of this, remember to highlight the good time. So with your partner, talk about and remember together the positive things especially when you're having a tough time, because it is easy to, and we're all wired to focus on the negative. That's how we're wired. It's called the negativity bias. And we tend to ruminate about what didn't go well, what we don't like, you know, how can I fix it and just focus on the problems. And then again, there's this like downward spiral when we do that. So the more you can focus on what is working, talk about the good times, you, you remind each other of, of the good connection you do have and you can rekindle, hopefully, if you don't aren't experiencing it now. 
Moving on to um, when your partner, so this is number six, when your partner has what, what the Gottmans call a bid for connection, they're reaching out to you. They want something from you. Either they want to connect or they want to ask you a question or they want your opinion on something. Um, the, the best thing you can do is turn towards them and receive them. So respond to that bid instead of no, don't have time. See you later. It's not important. Find somebody else. You know, all that is, is again, going to make more distance between you. So the more you can turn towards receive the person, even if you're not available now, you could say, Hey, I really want to support you with this, but you know, let's make a time for it. eight o'clock. I'll be available, but I can't do it now, whatever it is so that you are responding and making an effort to connect. And the last one is express empathy for your partner's experience. Everybody needs empathy and empathy like compassion would be to um, voice your sorrow for their struggles. Oh, that's so hard for you. I can see you're having a tough time, you know, to just let them know you see that they're struggling or suffering in some way without trying to fix it, without judging it in any way, um, but showing your concern and your love. And that also helps people feel more connected. Both parties will feel the connection. So this is a, a short list. There's so many more. I compiled this about a year ago and it still holds true. You know, it always will hold true that these are really, um, you know, solid standby practices that I encourage you to implement ideally every day in your relationship. And if you didn't see the first seven, go ahead and find that. If you're on my blog, you can just go to the, the blog before or in Facebook or YouTube, same thing, go to the video before and you should find it. Uh, thanks so much for watching. And I really appreciate you being here. Please leave a comment if you have any questions or any, any of your own um, things you want to add or insights you're having. I love hearing from you. And I am going to be offering a special Black Friday bundle for you. So stay tuned for that. I'll be talking about that more next week. And if you're here with me in November 22, <clears throat> stay tuned for that. And um, it's going to be a juicy one. So looking forward to sharing that with you. And I hope you have a lovely day or evening whenever you're watching. Bye-bye for now.